the this love of mother which is so overwhelming is sustaining it is the food it is the nourishment the love of the lord the love of the divine is multifold it is brilliant and it is thousands and thousands of times greater than the love of the mother this can be realized one when we concentrate and remain in a state of silence and in a silence of in this in the moments of love to nourish the love which you have that has been inculcated in the heart by the mother as a seed seeks a safe place to hide till it gains the strength to sprout and grow hearts that are weak or marred by frailties they need the love they need the nourishment they need the affection the care the most important element in the body that is the love to make them strong and pure as you would have noticed in your personal life that the love lives always exists and grows in the souls that are mostly lofty and true you wouldn't like to be in the company of people who are mighty haughty who are hateful spiteful and who are highly critical and they do not respect the another human being they are abusive and they are wicked in these places the love does not exist and the love does not stay for a moment for the love to grow it has to be a heart which is very soft soft like a butter it has to be very kind man the kindness comes into mind only when the hard heartedness and the stony nature of the heart is totally subdued and it is brought to the stage of softness and butterness the love shines and sparkles in speech and the speech becomes sweet and honey and when you speak to any people when you speak with love low tone and in kindness then it has a magnetic effect it affects the other person to also turn towards you with attention and love love brings love it is like a sweet scent it is like a fragrance of a flower it is like a rainbow in the sky love never adopts a harsh tone in song sung with melodious voice it is reflected and is amply shown to so, sabdo we notice that the young persons when they reach the age of teenage they are sexually attracted to the other sex and it spells a magic passion for youth its magic holds and tranced and in its spell people of all ages young and old are attracted towards body pleasures and they are prepared to sacrifice to win the heart of the other sexual other sexual being it is common in the animal and plant world every organization organism requires love not only physical love but it also requires care if you have seen the life of birds how when they come to the stage of fertility they take so much care to build their nest and in which they lay the egg and the mother takes care of the egg from predators and continues to care when the chick is hatched till the chick is in a position to fly and find its own way 
so also among fishes, so also among all the animals in the world, even the plants attract insects and birds to the fragrant flower with the emitting of fragr of emitting of scent, so that the pollination takes place and the fruits are born and the fruits are spread throughout the nature so that their gene, gene they so that the plants re produce spread all over the plant kingdom is also with the any species or is also with man man in order to continue to exist has to have love but this love prema is not only for the procreation and regeneration of his own being, but it has to be as a representative on earth, have enormous love to care for the nature, to care and preserve the nature, not to destroy it for his selfish aims. Love is not that, but love is is something which is divine. The divinity in man is enormous. If it has to be realized, if it has to be felt, then the love which has been first nurtured by the mother has to be regenerated again and again. Although during the period of adolescence and teenage, the attraction is towards the opposite sex and this attraction makes the adolescent look fine and smart and beautiful. It, it does all that is required to please the opposite sex to whom he is attracted. The, male, the man, the girl or a boy would dress up very neatly in all fashionable clothes and will also smear a fragrance and all the other fashionable things to attract the opposite side. Then after he succeed in, in winning a, the heart of the lady or the man or the, or the handsome macho man, the love is retained by sacrifice by an honest attempt to live up to the dictates of the love that is not a mere attraction. It is not a mere expression of personal desires or it is on sexuality but it is something more. There is care, there is affection, there is sincerity, there is honesty, there is graciousness. And all great qualities of sympathy flows like a stream, gushing and flowing with ecstasy, like magical springs emitting milk and honey. And therefore love oozes from hearts that are kindly. It is through love that one reaches the great aspect of truth. Truth being crystal clear, it always is present and emanates itself from a kind heart, a pure heart, a sublime heart. A truth never looks for hypocrisy, never looks for show and pomposity. It is not, it does not succumb to mere eology or praise. Because truth is shining, it effulgence and brightness showers on loving and compassionate soul. Compassion and mercy are the true great qualities which God has bestowed on human beings. Mercy is to show kindness, to show affection, to show love to one and all. In Mercy, there is no self-centeredness, there is no selfishness. The heart is so, so embracing, it gives 
all that you have in your mind and heart in form of affection and love it gives the kindness the care the requirement for the growth of the mankind without love without affection without kindness a society cannot sustain if a society has to sustain then the truth has to be pursued with absolute sincerity and humility sincerity is opposed to haughtiness anger it is opposed to jealousy sincerity has no ego it does not feel itself important and great and that everyone should turn their attention to that person but sincerity bends itself like mother teresa who had been sincere loving and humble like mohandas karamchand gandhi who became mahatma gandhi for the nation like khwaja mainuddin chishti of asmir sharif like thousands and thousands of sufis of this country and of the asian minar and various parts of the world who with their sincerity love and humility has spread humanism and have spread non violence and ahimsa our great prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was an embodiment of love of virtue of clean living of spirituality of all that could be thought of magnificent qualities of all the great qualities which man can think of they are all endowed in our great prophet he was so humble so kind so affectionate he was always thinking of the welfare and well being of humanity it is not just he was pronouncement through his words but he practiced he practiced by giving away his own food to his companions to the poor people to widows and to the orphans he distributed all his rich widows wealth and whatever contributions that would come to him in form of charity he would distribute it to the needy he would not take the food till the others are fed he spread the love the the love as a as a light throughout the world that is why the sufis call him as nurullah the light of god in the physical terms he might have he is he must have gone but his light is shining and will shine forever and people turn towards prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam outwards all the prophets who have come to teach greatness in this world towards all the saints of the world it is only to receive the light and the love in their hearts and mind to nourish love the life of great people of saints of prophets of men of sacrifice of men of endurance men who have worked very hard for the well being of another man are remembered so that the new generation inculcates in their mind and heart the great qualities of compassion mercy charity and thereby justice is retained in society in the in the whole nature is kept in its form in which god has created to go about disturbing the forest the nature by going about killing the animals and the plants results in destruction and affects the environment and uh, and brings in the global warming that is the reason why the sufis who are the followers of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and work very hard to retain the every word of lord work with shower their spiritual grace and bliss on humanity irrespective of caste creed or color 
they are they do not indulge in any such act which would injure another person which would take away the rights of another human being they are totally non violent and they totally give up all that things which destroys or affects the human body they care for one and all and they live throughout their life in love of lord in servanthood in, in uh, exerting tremendous patience and working for the, their own growth and their own spiritual well being Pro- proponents of philosophies have analyzed the aspect of love concern and feeling for others and felt that these feelings are required to be personally regulated in terms of a recognition of some supernatural force which has been termed as god almighty allah ishwara deva devaru and all beautiful names by which we call this great being whose effulgence and light and love is spread in the nature and all that is around us we are sustained by the growth of plants by the spread of oxygen and all that is required to sustain our being our being is sustained by several things which nature provides for us we, we although we work for the growth of our food we work for the well being of another person but we but nature provides the basic ingredients and the all that is required the foremost is the light oxygen environment and climate thus we realize that love is god alone and god is nothing but love this is to make love all pervading all existing and lasting thus it has been recognized that just as we need to have concern for humanity for working for good common good of all likewise it should be preceded by feelings emanating from heart and mind so that we are not propelled by a brute mechanical force but by a feeling of willingness which feeling should bring joy and happiness rather than pain and suffering pain and suffering accepted voluntarily in the form of sacrifice due to strong feeling of likeness to other person of his humanity to whom it is directed in the form of love then it does not cause destruction but it propels a person towards a life force a magnetic force which is ever lasting and ever living that is why love is ever living it exists from the time of immemorial from the time man has been created and will remain throughout till the universe exists love is one of the name of the gods we see in nature forces acting in unison or in harmony likewise in order to direct the feeling of love towards everlastingness and prevent it from becoming a destructive force and a psychological barrier great religious leaders and sufis and saints and prophets have out of deep spiritual experience shown us a way of regulating these feelings of love to make it lasting and to prevent it from being guided by selfish motive of self preservation alone every species of plant and animal lives to preserve its own species but the human being is one who can be above the aspect of selfish motive or of self preservation through the everlasting nature of love thus love has a, has neither 
to be excessive nor passive, but a via media, just as concern for each other is for common good and welfare of all. Love should not should be should neither be demanding nor profuse. It should neither be trusted or compelled or forced upon another being. Love should be for love's sakes. It is a silent, cool stream, and its water is pure and sweet. It should neither be poisonous nor bitter. Love should bring joy and happiness, and love should remove the feelings of bitterness, moroseness, self-possessiveness, hatred, and jealousy. Love should bring in us, in our, in our being, magnanimity and generosity of sun, truthfulness, simplicity, beauty, and grace of moon. It should bring contentment and tranquility of a notion. Love should make us forgiving, merciful, and comprom compromising in all seasons. Purity and shine, it should bring purity and shine of white snow of Himalayas, vastness of a desert, and, all, and enormous goodwill and everlasting goodness. We have seen love expressing itself in beauty and therefore beauty is truth and truth is beauty. We have seen how the children love each other. We have seen how lovers embrace themselves. We have seen how the mother loves the child till the child grows into a teenager, into a man, into even if at the time the man is old. Mother is alive, it always gives her grace and care, irrespective of the age of the man. The motherly love is supreme. This love has to be retained in our mind and heart by all acts of charity, by acts of goodness, by acts of graciousness. Sufism sustained itself in the love and love and love alone. Love is beauty. Love is truth, love is sincerity, love is charity, love is graciousness, love is removal of all bad, negative feeling in one's heart. To say anything which is good, to speak good, to act good, to do good, to do no harm to anybody is love. Love is the main teaching of all great religions. To say that Sufism is not part of Islam is nothing short of a lie. It does not at all teach violence. It only speaks about greatness of human soul and, en and endeavors human being to raise themselves from the animal instincts and to have moral fear, courage and and work for their own well-being to sustain honesty, integrity, without honesty and integrity, and working with their own hand with the sweat of the brow earn their bread, and never accumulate wealth, but see that the wealth to whom it belongs, it is, it is given to them. When you are in the government service, or you are working for some other person, or working for yourself, you are truthful. You maintain all that is required to be maintained in the law. And you work for the betterment of society. And then you go into deep meditation for few hours in the day. And you enjoy all that the signs of the gods are there. You inquire into the world, into the goodness of the world. You help the goodness. You help the nature. You help all your neighbors, your friends, your relatives, your brothers, your brothers and sisters, children. 
with what you earn you share your food you share your clothing love and affection are the most beautiful flowers in the garden of life we thank you very much for having attended this session in our center and we welcome you all to come to our center in its meetings on last sunday of each month at darus salam queens road bangalore which is next to congress office between 6 pm to 9 pm thank you thank you very much for your presence